Experiences, we are left to feel unworthy, empty, and questioning if we matter. But with God, He reassures us that we do matter and we do have tremendous value. Have you been conditioned to devalue yourself? Are you settling for a lifestyle of crumbs? Do you question your purpose and value? The No More Crumbs value messages are derived from the Bible story in Matthew 15, 25 through 28, where a woman believed she was only worthy enough to settle for crumbs and never believed she deserved more. Not until she met Jesus. Jesus encouraged her to want more in her life. And with this woman's acceptance of Jesus' love, she was awakened to want better for her life. From this acknowledgement, Jesus commended her on her faith to accept the new truths about herself. The Value Journey podcast is focused on providing supplemental and suggested tools to help you accept the positive truths about yourself and guide you on how to take action steps to activate your truths. God has designed for us all to live a life that is full and enriching. You deserve victories in your life. You are royalty, you are God's creation. You are valuable. Now join me as we grow together with the Value Journey podcast. Dr. David Shiner is a spiritual guide, meditation teacher, author, doctor, transformational coach, and speaker, sharing tried and true ancient heart-based methods to enlighten the world. Born in New York, he was exposed to spiritual practices at age eight. By his early teens, he had experienced many weekend retreat workshops facilitated by leading spiritual authorities. He also made numerous excursions and adventures to remote lands in Mexico and Spain, learning from great spiritual masters who led him deeper into silence, his heart, and healing. In the last 25 years, David has created a devoted community made up of corporate employees, university students, and private coaching clients, and has taught meditation to well over 25,000 people. His two books are spread around the entire globe and are helping hands-on healing specialists care for more patients and clients. David is a lifelong student. He obtained his BA in sociology, his doctor of chiropractic degree, has completed a year-long certification in neuro-linguistic programming, is certified in transformational coaching, is a spiritual intuitive, and has devoted his life to the study and practice of personal growth and human transformation. He synthesizes his diverse sources of knowledge and personal experience into his own extremely effective coaching platform and unique messages of spiritual guidance. Well, my friend, Robert Timmons, and former guest connected us to today's guest. I am so proud and just very honored that Dr. David Shiner can be with us today. And he has so much to share and a wealth of information to help you tap into your potential. So welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Rhonda. It's a pleasure to be here and an honor too. Oh, I am so honored myself. I've been so fascinated with your scope of work and your studies. As we were talking before we started recording, I'm embarking on that journey as well to be a life coach, transformational coach from my traumatic experiences and my work. I am honored <laughs> that you can offer your expertise to help the audience to overcome and begin progression forward. Would you like to start with your personal story? What gave you the opportunity to tap into this profession yeah. you're in now? Well, great, great, thank you. So when I was a little, little child, I always knew I wanted to help people. And I think that came from coming from a, how, a very quote unquote dysfunctional household where there was a lot of alcohol and drug abuse and probably a, quite a bit of narcissism and um, verbal abuse. I didn't witness any physical abuse, although sometimes those other forms of abuse can be just as, if not more traumatic. So I embarked on this journey of finding out who I am. Who am I? What is the meaning to life? If we're gonna go through so much trauma, there has to be a silver lining. So I started seeking the silver lining as a child. And my mother was also very spiritual and introduced me to some spiritual work. 
and books. And she would bring spiritual people three or four times a year to our home to teach workshops. And that opened my mind and my eyes more to the possibility of healing uh, through this trauma that I experienced as a child. And the turning point truly for me, I, I packed my bags, I took my dog on the leash and I left home at 13 to just get, just get out of there. Because, you know, after a period of time, who can be subjected to so much trauma of that nature? And it wasn't before long that one of my family members found me and picked me up. It was just a few hours. And I was like, darn, man, you know, but it was meant to be that I went back home. And I, one day I remember going into my closet where I had my clothing and all of my little keepsakes and my medals and my trophies. And I said, you know, what's the point of even being here anymore? You know, if there's going to be so much trauma and then a voice spoke to me and I know that it was the voice of God that said, there's a higher purpose for you to be here. And it's important for you to stay where you are and go through like the acorn has the promise of an oak tree within it and the caterpillar has the promise of a butterfly within it and the grain of sand inside the oyster shell has the promise of a pearl there is that promise that you're going to awaken to and help other people that's how it all started that's amazing story similar traumatic experiences and dysfunctional family it really takes a toll on your self-esteem. I feel like you said you're at the end of your rope. Why? What's the purpose? It seemed like your mother was a value indicator, a person that spoke into your life, reawaken, do something different and something better. Yeah, she was. She went through a lot of this turmoil in the household as well. Yet at the same time, she had a great support system and always sought out uh, spiritual healers and was into, you know, Wayne Dyer books and Marianne Williamson, Louise Hay. And she introduced me to a book called The Way of the Peaceful Warrior by Dan Millman, which is an amazing book and also a book called Jonathan Livingston Siegel by Richard Bach. And I encourage your audience members to take a look at some of those books because it's about the journey, going on this journey and finding oneself. And you're hundred percent correct. The self-esteem gets minimized if it's there at all, because we end up subordinating ourselves to authority figures. And then we try to help these people and fix them. And we take the thought focus off ourselves and place the focus on saving other people. And so my mom was a great guidepost for me. And she, unfortunately, she passed at a real early age with cancer. And she said to me right before she passed, she said, maybe you'll be the one to break the chain. These things set me off on my journey to find out who I am and how can I in turn help other people find the greatness and magnificence that's within them. She was a great person to help me. And that's so selfless of you and courageous as well to take on that mantle. And you're, I know you're helping. I saw that on your website, you're helping countless people touching lives in so many ways and at so many levels because of the experience you went through. And also because of your kindness, because that couldn't have been accomplished without that. And so I'm, I'm really intrigued about the different spiritual practices that were shown and studied, please. Oh, definitely. So some of these healers, uh, Native American healers would come to our home on Long Island. I ended up growing up on Long Island, growing up, right? We all would put quotes around growing up. And they taught Native American medicine wheel practices and spirit animals and um, crystal, working with crystals. So at a young age, I was exposed to all of that wisdom. And then when I eventually did leave the house 
And I had the opportunity to study in Spain and Mexico, and I've traveled to Hawaii, Canada, and all throughout the US, I embarked upon working with great masters and spiritual teachers and mystical studies, esoteric wisdom and meditation programs. And I've been able to incorporate those into my work so I can bring it to people. And a lot of the work that I do as well, I learned from some of these people channeling and being able to tap into um, the voices that are coming through, yet we don't oftentimes have the ears to hear because we're not listening and being able to work with people on an intuitive coaching, spiritual coaching level. And I did have an amazing 15 year experience with a teacher where he brought some teachings from what ought to have been taught at, in the far remote mountains of the, of the East. Yet because of the strife and the conflict between China and Tibet, those teachings were brought to the East, excuse me, to the West where we are in the United States. And I was fortunate enough to come across many of those as well and principles of remembering oneself and self-observation, being able to notice when we're so quick to react when somebody says or does something. We don't have to, we can become a voice of stillness and neutrality and observe ourselves and create that gap from reacting or observing in that silent space and then ask ourselves, what are my choices here? We're not able to do that when we're in the trauma, when we're in the dysfunction, but as we slowly come out of it, which everybody can, and it often takes working with a guide, working with a coach such as yourself, myself, Robert, and all of these people to lead them and give pointers and arrows to the greatness within themselves. Yeah. And what methods, I, I saw that you were also teaching a silent meditation and does, does that contribute to tapping into that? That does, it contributes greatly into tapping into it. And one of the things that I guide people into their sacred space inside themselves into a gratitude meditation. It's so challenging when we're going through the trauma, when we're going through the angst and the turmoil to be able to turn the mirror from just seeing all of the dysfunction and trauma to turn the mirror so we're facing the mirror and then being able to take a look and say, through meditation, through silence, all of the things in my life that I'm grateful for. And once we start practicing gratitude for what we do have, that can shift the perspective totally. The meditation that I lead people through, also I am tapping into universal messages and those are coming through so I can, through a guided meditation, bring information and messages that people need to hear in the present moment. That's so powerful. That's amazing. Because change is very daunting and they're stuck and comfortable in their trauma and in, in holding their space of protection and being victimized and setting boundaries. It change to make a change is very daunting and to change into something that they always dreamt about is very scary. So how do you overcome that or help the person visualize that they can make a positive change? Well, that's a great question. And the first way is to make a list of your fears. Everybody has a set of fears the same way everybody is born with a set of talents 
we're born with the talents, we accumulate the fears as we age and as we're exposed to different traumas and dysfunctions and experiences. And then when you are in touch with what your fears are, which is difficult to do, for example, the fear of being seen, the fear of not measuring up, the fear of failure, the fear of success, the fear of public speaking, okay? Whatever the fear might be, I always recommend to people to confront those fears and move beyond the fears because on the other side of your greatest fears reside your biggest freedoms. So it's your fear that's the gateway to freedom. And I help people through my coaching to recognize what those fears are, what are those blocks, and to be able to start to get to work to enjoy the greatest breakthroughs. It's possible. It's all possible, but it's not all probable. Possibility transforms into probability through action and through work. And that is true because it does take a discipline and a, a work to do and consistency with all the methods. And so does the Dharma fall into that? Or d- does that align with it? I I was just studying it. I'm not fully familiar with it, but it was meaning in every different culture. There's a different meaning. So could you please explain it more? Yeah, of course. Dharma is different in different cultures. There's a Sanskrit meaning. There's a Buddhist meaning. There's a Christian meaning. There's many different meanings uh, uh, to Dharma. Although as I've put my programs together to help people transform, the way that I explain it is through my work called Dharmatology. And I'm a dermatologist, similar to a dermatologist. I'm the first dermatologist. And I have brought this work, dermatology, to the world to help people go within and investigate what their purpose in life is. My mission is my purpose, and my purpose is to help other people find theirs. So that's dermatology. And through that platform, I help to guide people within themselves to remember who they came here to be for the world and what their reason for being is. That's Dharma, your reason for being. And I would like to pose a few questions for your listeners and your audience to be able to actually do this. Because again, Through traumatic experiences, through a lot of angst and strife, we are always looking outside of ourselves and we become external and fear ridden, ridden with fear. And we don't see the possibility. We don't have the hope. One of the greatest ways, again, number one, make a list of gratitude. Everything you're grateful for in your life. Put that aside and then go ahead and write these questions down. Number one, what do I want? Now, in our world, it's taboo to think selfishly. But it's one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves. And what comes along with selfish thinking in a healthy way is setting healthy boundaries. And there's an amazing book, and I'll get back to these questions in a minute, called Boundary Power. It's a purple and black workbook. I recommend all people listening because we're never given a manual on how to take care of ourselves. So we can't take care, really take care of others. Learning to set healthy boundaries. Please look into that book. It's available on Amazon. It's a workbook. Amazing. So the first question is, what do I want? Make a list of everything that you want. The second question is, 
what would that do for me specifically? Number three is how will I know when I have it? Number four is what resources do I need to get what I want? Number five, what resources do I already have? Number six, what keeps me from having this already? Okay, write those questions down, put them to the side, and now write these questions down. Number one, what do I love to do? What do I love spending my time doing? Start taking the focus off of the external world and start looking within. Number one, what do I love to do? Make a list. Number two, what are my unique talents? Every, everyone, as I said at the beginning, Rhonda, is born with a set of unique talents. They learn the fears. Write down what you're uniquely talented in. Number three, what does the world need? Compassion, understanding, et cetera. Number four, what can I be paid for? I'll tell you, you could be paid for what you love doing and what you're uniquely talented in. And when you put those together and you go get to work on that, you'll have more abundance and prosperity than you could ever imagine. Those questions really challenge you. They Thank do. you for that. Thank you. That's well. And when you recognize, you finally recognize that potential. So now what do you do with that? You, you answered all the questions. You, you're recognizing and accepting your potential. What do you do with it next? So there's the movie that a lot of people that are listening to this have probably seen called The Secret. And The Secret is wonderful, although the law of attraction is great. It, the, it leaves out the glue. And the glue is the action. Now, I recommend most people work with a coach. You, I'm a coach. There's many coaches. Thank you. And a coach is able to recognize blind spots in people, things that they're not able to see themselves, to bring them into the spotlight so then they can be seen and then they'll disappear. So it's the action. It's getting to work. It's when you do that exercise and answer those questions and your reason for being comes from within you out and it's embedded in your heart space and your heart chakra. Everybody has it within them. I say, take baby steps, devise a plan. Rome wasn't built in a day and neither were you. You took nine months to create this perfect specimen. Everybody wants this thing yesterday. We're in a quick fix microwave oven drive through society. All of the greatness takes time to come to the forefront, to seek help in the form of guidance. And remember, just because other people say so, it doesn't make it so. The answers you seek are inside of yourself. So when you find it, keep the lid on the pot. That steam is building. Don't take the cover off the pot and let all the steam out. Keep the cover on. Let it keep building. Use your intuition and guidance to find somebody that can help you walk the path so you could put your jewels and gems of the treasure chest that's within you. You can bring those out slowly. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> and I recommend you. You're amazing. So as a coach and as a mentor, how do you get the clients to stay consistent and focused? Fulfillment, do you have you found in a particular great testimony 
that has happened? I'm sure each one is different, but which one stands out the most to you? There's testimonies where, because I do a lot of work with undergraduate stu- students as well, helping them find their purpose. One of the greatest testimonies was a student who was struggling, struggling greatly at home. A lot of dysfunction, trauma, different forms of abuse, was in college just to escape, just to be out of the house, didn't have an identity. Self-esteem was eroded. And she was in one of my lectures and thought that she wanted to go towards athletic training, possibly strength and conditioning, physical therapy, all great careers. But then when I took the class through this exercise and then I started working with her one-on-one after afterwards, she came to me and said, you know, I had no idea what my purpose was. Now working with you for a series of just a few months, I see that I'm here to be an executive chef and I want to go to school to be a culinary artist so I can end up having my own restaurant in Brooklyn, New York. This person's from the Midwest. I was just watching all of these shows on the Food Network like beat Bobby Flay and a lot of these <laughs> chefs on that, on that uh, show where they have restaurants in Brooklyn and that's who she aspired to be. And I said, there is nothing that makes you different from Bobby Flay, Amanda Freitag, uh, all these peoples are carrying on these shows. Steve Jobs, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, Elon Musk, Maya Angelou, they made a choice to step out and step in front. We all have the same greatness and magnificence within us. This young student recognized that I'm here to be a chef. And she's finished with the school and she just opened the restaurant in Brooklyn in 2020. Well, we can all do that. It comes back to that first question. What do I want? Start getting selfish. It's okay. There's that taboo in society. Don't be selfish. Share this, share that. So we learn that from a young age. We're programmed and conditioned by well-meaning parents, teachers, and they're well-meaning, but they're just repeating everything that they learned. It doesn't mean just because it's said so, it doesn't make it so. So that's the greatest testimonial. One other thing I'd like to share about that is, and if you guys want to write this down or remember this, write down, it doesn't matter what others say. What matters is, do you have a dream? Powerful. Oh my goodness. (laughs) I'll draw dropped here. Back to the, the silent meditation. And so that just intrigues me because I believe there's so many layers to that method and practice. I just started meditating on my own with the breathing, like the mindfulness, but silent meditation sounds so in depth. This continued to really get into the core of who we are and to get through the woods of the trauma so we could be set free. So I would just want you to talk about it, the discipline in it, and then the results of it. Sure. It's, it's recently been said that we are the entire universe manifesting through a human nerve system. The nervous system is made up of the brain, the spinal cord, which is the extension of the brain, and the 31 branches of nerves that come off of the spinal cord. So that statement we are the entire universe manifesting through a human nerve system actually means that we are holograms of the entire universe. There's no place that the universe begins and we end or we begin and the universe ends. And there's nothing that keeps you and I, Rhonda, separate from one another. We're all connected. Again, that programming and conditioning by the well-meaning people that came before us, laid the cards out for us to pick up that hand of cards. That's the hand that we're dealt and we're supposed to play it. 
And I say, no, take that hand and throw it back in and ask for new cards. Yet, better yet, just throw those cards in and just go. Just go explore. So meditation is an exploration of silence within. And when we tap into that silence, what we'll find is that there's a backdrop from where all the noise originates. And there would be no noise without that backdrop of silence. One of the interesting things is that when we sit and we get into a meditative state and close our eyes and become quiet and still, one of the first practices is just recognizing the breath. Actually, even before that, it's useful to do a scan of the body for any areas of tightness or tension. And notice, for example, if the shoulders are tight, bring the awareness and the attention to the shoulders. They might be up here, then you'll notice that you can just drop them and let it go. You can also bring your awareness and your attention with your eyes mostly closed, slightly open, to allow some light in because we don't want complete darkness is to start bringing our attention to various areas of the body. Meditation originated way, way before we even know. Before Buddha, you guys can look up this name. Uh, the person's name is Zarathustra or Zoroaster. Nietzsche wrote a book called Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Take a look at Zarathustra's life and, and what he brought to the world. And in meditation, when you start becoming familiar and putting your attention to different parts of your body, you'll then remember that you have one. Because most people are up in here the entire day thinking, constantly thinking. And what you'll notice in meditation, once you can start remembering that you even have a body, is the thoughts will carry you away. They're designed to do that because our thoughts are on a loop a repeating loop day in and day out. We usually don't have new thoughts. So in meditation, as you start to become aware of a thought, oh, there's a thought. See if you could follow the thought all the way through to its completion. Usually we don't. We have one thought and then we have another thought and then the, one of the children call us, I'm hungry. And then we have, and then before, where, what was I just doing? That's the place to begin. And then it's similar, the analogy would be if it was a beautiful blue sky outside, no clouds, and you're looking up at the beautiful blue sky, which it's not blue, by the way, it's an illusion. It's just, anyway, that's, a whole, that's another podcast. If there was one puffy cloud that started, that came out of nowhere, similar to the thoughts, See if you can observe that puffy cloud going across the sky, similar to a thought. How long can you follow that puffy cloud with the blue sky backdrop of stillness? And there's many principles, there's many concepts. That's a good place to start. One last thing I'll say about a meditation practice and guided meditation is that when you start going within yourself, bring your awareness and your attention to your blood flowing through your body. Bring your awareness and your attention to your bones, ligaments, tendons, organs. See if you can get in touch with your heart and your kidneys and lungs and your spleen and your Oh my goodness, there's a whole universe just in there where you could spend your, the rest of your life 
that will create a sense of awe and gratitude and remember that you created yourself from two cells, a sperm and an egg. And most people are striving for perfection in life. Remember, you created yourself perfect in the image of God. So you already are perfect. You just have to remember it. Most people go through life thinking one day they're going to wake up and, oh, I've arrived. No, you already arrived a long time ago. Now all you need to do is wake up. I also read that you shouldn't expect the same experience each time. You should be expecting different, different experiences because you can't relive that one experience with the silent meditation. It's extremely powerful. It's actually impossible to experience, to experience anything in life the same. There's this word that we hear people say a lot, and that's called like. You know, like when I went to the, no, it's like nothing because we're always only in the present moment. So it's impossible for something to be like anything else. And that relates to what you just said. Each and every time it's going to be a new experience. Guess what? Most people are typically living in two dimensions that are illusions one is the past and the other one is the future. And the reason that human beings are living in those two dimensions is because of our ego. The ego, it's a very well-meaning ego. Like my friend, friend Wayne Dyer told me a long time ago, we had a conversation and he was talking to me about the ego. And he said, David, it's a very well-meaning ego, but it keeps us from living in that only place that exists, which is the present moment. The death of the ego itself is the now. And it knows that. And it doesn't want to go anywhere. It loves habitating in here. It takes over at a very young age. So one of the ways that we can tap into the true essence of who we are is working on the meditation and what you just said and bringing ourselves to the present moment and repeating the words and the affirmation become friends with the present moment. The more we can become friends with the present moment, we'll start seeing life as life truly is. And that's a good point because you mentioned Louise Hayes. I listen to her affirmations, the I am affirmations. And that, that has been changing me tremendously to remember the positive things of who I am and what I could do. And so I would like to, you to touch on the affirmation and also what you mentioned, the ego, if you could talk more about both. please. The past exists as an illusion as does the future. The only time that the future will ever arrive is in the now. The only time something ever happened was in the now. Somebody once came up with a calendar, they came up with time. Animals don't know that that exists. Now my dog, my black labradoodle, she's always in the present moment. She's constantly teaching me. The ego creates problems for us to constantly be in solve mode, solution mode. I'll ask you all the question right now. Tell me what problems you have in this present moment. Now, there's things that we all have to take care of. That we have to take care of things day in and day out. But the problems are a byproduct of the ego keeping us trying to solve something from the past, like these regrets that we have. And the ego is also keeping us most of the time in the future, which is where many people these days are experiencing an exorbitant amount of worry 
and anxiety. So anxiety and worry is paramount right now. So what you can do for yourself is to remember yourself, just relax and take a deep breath, know that everything is wonderful right here, right now. You can repeat, I am alive. I am powerful. I am, I am love. I am peace. I am abundance. I am prosperity. I am transformation. I am in the image of God. Take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and ground yourself. And remember that everything that you have gone through, the traumas, the trials, the tribulations, don't resist it. If you resist it, you will persist it. You've heard that which we resist will persist. Recognize that all of it is part of your training. It's part of your training. So then you can formulate your program. You can write your book. You can write your magazine article. You can get on the stage. You can tell your story. So these affirmations are quite powerful. I am peace. I am gratitude. I am forgiveness. I am love. I am acceptance. I am surrender. Oh my goodness. What a great way to close. Oh my gosh, you're amazing. <laughs> so are you. Oh, thank you. Could you please let the audience know on how they can get in touch with you and sign up for your training and to tap into their potential and start a living abundant life? Definitely. Thank you for having me. I mean, before I tell people how to get in touch with me, this has been so wonderful and it's an amazing experience, Rhonda. So uh, Instagram is my last name and then my first name. So Shiner David, S-C-H-E-I-N-E-R, David. So at Shiner David. And then my website is the opposite. Um, my name, davidshiner.com. And on my website, you'll see everything that I'm working with and upcoming books and workshops and the dermatology and the coaching platform. Listen, none of what I work with, and you'll see it on my website, is about me. It's all about you living the life you were meant to live. Tapping into the greatness and magnificence that you came here with. It's all inside of you. It's not out there to go and find it. And then I help you with some pointers and some arrows. And you find it. You bring it to the forefront. You bring it to the world. And then you go on your merry way. I just help you locate it and bring it out. So David Shiner, S-C-H-E-I-N-E-R.com. Just send me a, a little message through the website and we can hop on a 15 minute uh, discovery Zoom call and see if we will continue on a journey together or not. Either way, it's okay. I agree. And I, I please, I urge you, please connect with him because he has such a wealth of knowledge and he just gave us a little tidbit for today. And I thank you, Dr. Schneider. Thank you so much. Thank you. So welcome. It's just such a joy and a pleasure meeting you, with, meeting you, being with you. And I look forward to um, hopefully meeting you in person sometime. I do as well. <laughs> so thank you. And please connect with him as soon as possible. Until next time, I'm Rhonda Jennifer. Thank you. To find out how to tap into your potential, contact Dr. David Shiner. Instagram at Shiner David or at www.davidshiner.com. Thank you.